Hi, welcome to this week's episode of In the Hoods. This week we're going to be talking about Central Park, everybody's backyard. Central Park is something like 863 acres of land running straight up the middle of Manhattan between the Upper West Side and the Upper East Side, and it runs from 59th Street to 110th Street. We couldn't possibly talk about the whole park in one sitting, so I'm going to divide it into three areas to go along with neighborhoods we've been discussing. I think our last neighborhood was Lincoln Square. So the park really begins on 59th Street, where Lincoln Square begins, and both on the east side and also on the west. You have Columbus Circle on the west side, which is the beginning of the park. It's the end of 8th Avenue, and you can walk into the park there. Or you can go to what's called Grand Army Plaza on 5th Avenue and 59th Street and walk into the park there. There are also a couple of entrances along 59th Street itself. And we're going to be talking about the park up to 72nd Street. And there is so much happening in this park. First of all, most people know that the park was one of the designers is very famous, Frederick Olmsted, who was an architect. He entered a contest which was run for the design of the park with a gentleman named Calvert Vaux. They won the contest and got this commission. He's an architect. And you really don't realize it when you walk through Central Park that this whole place was designed. And it was very difficult construction. They began the construction of Central Park shortly before the Civil War and amass all this land. They had to seize property. It was ugly. It was ugly. Seneca Village is an area that was apparently a black village, and it was seized. Imminent domain. And sorry, folks, you have to go. But we'll get to that later on. That'll be in our probably our second episode. But between 59th Street and 72nd Street. Remember, this land was very rocky. It was full of swamps. It had to be drained. A lot of outside soil was brought in. And the whole place was planted and planned, which is amazing when you walk through it. It's like being in another world. And for some New Yorkers, this is the only country they'll ever see. So it's very, very special. But there are also many things to do in this park. First of all, Central Park views are coveted by everyone. And in the last 10 years, you have along 57th Street what's called Billionaire Row. And that also goes along 59th Street and building these huge skyscrapers so that you have more apartments, more condominiums with Central Park views. You know, some of these are 50 stories, but you have a view. It's better on the ground, though. It's better to get in the park and walk in the park and smell the trees and the flora. There's also a lot of bird watching in Central Park. There are animals in Central Park like raccoons and hedgehogs. Just animals you wouldn't associate with city dwelling that make their home there. 
and in the area below 72nd Street, as you walk into the park from the east side, you walk up to a small lake which has ducks and other water birds frequent this lake and you can walk around this lake and then you walk up and the next thing you hit will be the children's zoo which is a lovely little zoo with the opportunity to feed the animals for small children and to really learn about the animals. And then you can walk further uptown, we're going north now, and you will hit the Central Park Zoo, which is at about 62nd Street. The Central Park Zoo has been, in the last 10 years, completely renovated and is a magical place. You know, the animals have a lot of more outdoor space than they used to when I was growing up. It was really pretty grim. You went there to feel sorry for the animals. Now you can see the polar bears out looking around. There was one polar bear that used to do laps. He was known for doing laps in his pool. And then they discovered that he was a little on um, ADD and they gave him a tranquilizer so he would stop doing the laps back and forth. But there's a wonderful birdhouse and it's just, it's a really special place. If you go a little west from there, you'll hit the Central Park Carousel, which used to be one of my favorite spots as a child. Going to the carousel and riding on these big wooden horses. They don't look quite as big today as they did back then. But it's been maintained and money has been spent to keep it up to date. And it's a magical place for children and adults alike. If you come in from the west side on 59th Street and you come up, you end up hitting some baseball fields on which there are league games during the summer, different uh, company leagues. Uh, I remember I played on the uh, penthouse team believe it or not, back in the 80s. And it was a co-ed game and they'd play fire departments. It was all PR, but it was so much fun. And they reserved those courts or those fields for that. As you go north further, you hit Sheep's Meadow, which is a huge meadow where they have outdoor concerts frequently free outdoor concerts. I think that's usually where the Philharmonic has concerts. It's also just a great place to go and catch some rays, have a picnic with your friends or family. This park is used by millions of people during the year, which brings us to how is it maintained? Well, the park actually falls under the auspices of the New York City Parks Department. However, there is an, a nonprofit organization called the Central Park Conservancy, which really maintains the park. And they collect money from donations, and they are really in charge of maintaining, keeping this park as beautiful as it is. And it's a huge, huge job and really deserves our support. Then as you go up a little bit further north, you get to the east, leaning toward the east, you get to what's called the band shell. And this is just south of 72nd Street and Bethesda Fountain. And the band shell also has concerts during the summer um, and they usually have chairs in front of the band shell 
for people to sit and listen. As you go further north, you get to what is really 72nd Street going through the park. They call it something else, Central Park Way or something like that. But it, it's really 72nd Street. And you come to Bethesda Fountain or Bethesda Plaza, which is one of the most beautiful spots in the park. There is a huge plaza with this gorgeous fountain in the center, which was designed by Jacob Ray. And he was an architect with the Parks Department in the 1800s. And Bethesda Fountain and Bethesda Plaza is the only part of this park which was actually built, that still exists, that was actually built during the Civil War. Although construction continued to go on, that would be about 1860. But I mentioned this fountain because it was such a meeting place for me and my friends when I was in high school. And we'd go there and engage in illicit activities. Also because I just sold Jacob Ray's brownstone which was located on 26th Street, and he was the original owner. So all, you know, this city is so full of history, and it all ties together. Central Park is just a huge part of everybody's New York and needs to be enjoyed.